Welcome, it's a great day to be a miner. In today's video, we're gonna teach you how not to grow your mining farm. Without further ado, let's spin that intro. Welcome, so here we are today and we've had a major disaster happen recently and this is the UNSC rig. It is four Founders Editions cards. I got two 3060 TIs, a 2070 Super Founders and a 2060 Super Founders and well this guy is in the secret mining lair and something tragic happened the other day. I noticed it went offline so I go to check on it and it's still running. The fans are still running. And then I noticed there's water all over the floor. There's water on the wall. And uh, yeah, this is the hose outlet for outside. It comes from through the wall and it's supposed to be frost free connection. And then it plugs into your main copper wire or your plastic if you're using plastic. But yeah, this is uh, it busted very badly right there. It has a big slit where it just popped open. And then as soon as we turned on the hose outside, water was inadvertently flowing down the wall and sprayed on this rig. It was still powered on the whole time. So it will not post as it was. I didn't realize that it had the water all over it, but it had a good layer of dust where I haven't blown it out for about a month. And so then you can see if I show up close, there's actually water dots in the dust all over these main GPUs and across this back bracket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing apart and I'm going to troubleshoot and figure out what components have went bad. I assume it's just the motherboard is fried, but hopefully none of the GPUs are bad and that we can get this thing back up and running. I do have two complete mining rigs frames with the boards and the um, power supply and everything already set up where I could easily just move these GPUs to. But before I do that, I have to really take these apart, take these down. I'm not going to take them clear apart, but I need to take them down and thoroughly clean them. I got to get any spot that had water on it. I have to clean that up. I don't want to get corrosion and down in these GPUs. I don't think too much actually got down into the cooler. So I think that should be okay. And I don't think I'm going to tear them clear down, but we'll see. So let's do a close up of this thing. And then we're gonna go ahead and since it's already been running, I don't think I can do more damage to it. I'll go ahead and hook a monitor up to it, try to boot it, see if it goes into BIOS. Then I'm gonna unplug all the GPUs. Same thing, I'm gonna try to boot it, see if it goes into BIOS. If it doesn't, then I'm gonna tear it down and go piece by piece and try to figure out by process of elimination which parts have fried and which parts are still viable. So let's go ahead and get a close up and get started. Yep, I'm flying through the air. This is not good. Okay, so we got a monitor hooked and we just have the server power supply and the other power supply plugged in. And we're just gonna go ahead and see what happens. We'll boot the GPUs and then we'll hit this here power supply and then we'll push our power button and we'll just see what happens. So we're getting power to our fans. Our CPU fan is not spinning, but that's because there's a cable on there. All right, so CPU fan spooled up. And not getting into any kind of BIOS. So it's not posting. If it would actually post into the OS, these fans would slow down because the drivers would kick in. Instead, they stay at full speed. And this is how I found it in the mining layer with the water damage. So next, I'm gonna take all these GPUs off and then try the same thing. Okay, so I've got all the GPUs removed. Now that all that remains is the core components. I have a Gigabyte D3, um, H110 D3A, I think it is. Um, motherboard, it's an old school mining board and those things have been tanks. I've had this one for like five years. Um, just a cheap Roswell bronze power supply, a platinum server power supply. I believe that one is a Dell. 
Um, and then a, a two, gig, two four gigabyte sticks of RAM and a Intel Celeron in there. So now we're stripped down. Let's see if we get a post. Now that the only thing is running is the core component. So yeah, we're still not getting a post. So definitely one of the core components are gone. So next what I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove all the clutter, the risers and whatnot, get them out of the way. And then we're going to try to figure out if it's core components. I think the easiest thing to do will be one to test the ram we can just pull the ram put a different stick in from a working uh stick um, and then the second thing we can do is easily just set another power supply right on the table next to it and connect the cpu and the 24 pin with a different power supply to eliminate whether or not the power supply is bad um, and those would be the two easiest to troubleshoot the next will be the CPU. I'll put in a different Celeron in there and see if we get post. If not, it's probably the board and more than likely it is the board anyway, but this is just the process that you go through on the process of elimination to find what parts are damaged, what parts are bad. So yeah, and the other thing we didn't test is actually the, um, it's still plugged into the solid state drive. So what I should do is, net first thing I'm gonna do is unplug that solid state drive, and then we're gonna see if we can get to BIOS, if that for some reason would have any issue. It shouldn't, because we're not getting to post, it shouldn't have anything to do with that, but process of elimination, we'll get that out of there first. So we'll go SSD removal, we'll go RAM test, then we'll go power supply, and then CPU, and find out if the CPU or the board is bad, and go from there. All right, we are fully stripped down. We have unhooked the SSD where we've tried to boot. We're still not getting post. Here are the GPUs. They don't look too terrible. I've already sprayed the air. Uh, you used the air blaster and knocked out as much air uh, dust as I could, but obviously they need a good thorough cleaning. And so, yeah, let's try the next piece. All right, everything's removed, SSD's removed, only the bare core components are in there. Let's try it again, make sure that we don't post. Then we are going to remove, actually before they do that, we're gonna do the power supply first. I think we're gonna just set a brand new power supply or at least another power supply beside it, plug in the main um, CPU and 24 pin and then see if we get post that way. Okay, now we've got an EVGA 600 bronze. I just set it on the desk here and I plugged in the 24 pin and the eight, the two, four by four CPU for eight pin power. And then we'll turn this thing on and we'll see what we get here. And just like that, the CPU fan kicks on. And we're just gonna let it set for a while to make sure and then we can even remove the uh, CMOS battery. We unhook the power supply and then reset the settings to make sure that it's not gonna boot there. And it, we're gonna try that before we actually remove the RAM or the CPU. So to make sure that it just doesn't need reset, so. <laughs> okay, so now I had removed the power cord and the CPU power so that the PSU wasn't plugged in. I popped out the CMOS battery off the board. I held power for over 30 seconds. That should clear the CMOS. And then I've plugged back in the power supply and we're gonna boot back up with just the core and see if maybe we can get a post. We're gonna let it set. We're gonna see if it posts. I have a feeling it won't. And then the next thing will be to pull the RAM, put some good sticks of DDR3, because this is an older board in there. Just put one good stick in the main slot, and then we'll fire it up and see if we can get a post that way. All right, nothing doing here. Did not get a post after the CMOS reset. So we're gonna power this thing back down. We're gonna pull some RAM and we're gonna see if that helps. All right, I actually have a whole rig like this already built that has been sitting empty. So I swapped the four gigabytes of RAM out of it and stuck it in here. I put some Vengeance RAM. I pulled the Elite and the Ballistics out and then we're gonna test it, but I don't think this is gonna do any good. So, but we're gonna do it anyway. And then we're gonna see if we get a post. If we don't get a post, then we know it's not our RAM. And then we're going to swap the CPU and then it's probably gonna be the board is toast. That's my guess. 
All right, so definitely not the RAM. So that only leaves the motherboard or the CPU. So what I've decided to do is this old rig here that's still fully set up with no GPUs on it actually has the same exact motherboard. This is the Gigabyte H110 D3A tank of a old school motherboard. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna swap the board and I'm gonna drop it in here. I'm gonna have to change the cooler out because we got this big tall cooler on this one and I'll have to go back to the stock Intel cooler to make it fit under here. And that's what we're gonna do because that'll be the easiest swap. And then I could literally just hook all the components back on there and it should fire right up, even the SSD because the CPU might be a very slight different Celeron, but Windows will easily detect it because this is still Windows rig. I might just go ahead and convert this one into Hive while I already have it down. Yeah, we'll see. But we're gonna go ahead and swap the motherboard first and then we're gonna test it out. Either that or I'll just take both motherboards out and then I could do a CPU swap and then I could test the board to see if the board itself is actually bad or if the CPU is bad or both are bad. So yeah, let's do that. All right, so here is the bad board that has the water damage and is probably shorted out. And then here is the working good board that's pulled from a very old rig, super dusty. So what first thing I'm gonna do is go blow this thing out. And then I'm gonna take the CPU out of this guy I'm gonna put it into this motherboard over here. And then I'm just gonna set my power supply and a monitor up here. And I'm gonna plug it in and I'm gonna see if that gets me to the, um, to, to the BIOS, if it actually gets me into the uh, boot. So if, if I get to the post, if I get to post, then I'll know that the CPU fried and not the actual board. So that'll be a good test. And if not, then I'll probably just move the CPU back over to here, swap the cooler, and then we'll plug this guy into the existing rig, and then we'll scrap that board, pull the RAM, and then sell it for parts for 10 bucks. If anybody wants a dead board for 10 bucks, hit me up. Okay, so we've blown off the board really well with our handy dandy X-Power A2 link down in the description, and we cleaned this up. Now we're just going to take this CPU off of here, and plop it into here. We're gonna put our power supply, plug in our monitor, and we're going to see if we can get a post. Let's go. Okay, I got both the CPUs out. The CPU out of the working rig is a Intel uh, Celeron G4500, and out of the currently disabled is a G3930. They are very similar. This one has a little bit more horsepower to it than this one. Both work about the same in a mining rig anyway, so, it took a lot of work to get this one clean. This one looks like it hasn't uh, been, the thermal material had to be at least six years old because the thermal material was at least six years old and it had turned into a really hard crust. And this one, it was not as bad, but it was pretty dusty around the outside chiplet. So then I had to use, what I always use, I use this Arctic Clean. It's got a thermal material remover and then a thermal surface uh, purifier. So what you do is you clean real good with the remover and then you put just a tiny drop on your CPU and then you wipe really good and that gets it prepped for your next thermal paste. And my favorite thermal paste I always use is MX4. I'll put links for those ones down in the description. So I'm gonna put the good CPU out of this one into this one, and then we're going to power it up and see if we get a post. Okay, so now we have did a CPU swap. We took one out of the good board, and we put that CPU in the bad board, and we took the, that, the CPU out of the bad board and put it in the good board. We're gonna start with the known good board and see if this will post. If it'll post, that means the CPU is good and most likely this one won't post and it'll probably be the board, but this is a good way to test process of elimination style. So I've got it hooked up to our monitor here. Let's go ahead and power it up and see what happens. It booted on power. The LEDs on the board lit up immediately. And let's see if we get any kind of a display here. And there we go, we got a post. So that tells me the CPU on this setup was still good. So the G3930 sub survived the water damage. And then we're gonna turn this one off. We're gonna plug in the power to it and boot it. Most likely it's not gonna boot and the board itself is dead. And then I'll just rip it down to adjust the components. Okay, we went ahead and switched the power supply over into this board. It has the G4500 from the good board in it. And let's see if we get any kind of post or power here. 
So I didn't jump, so I'm gonna have to uh, power, use a power switch because I got no fan spin. So uh, this one must not be booting on power. I don't generally like to, to jump aboard, but I don't have the power buttons. They're all packed away in one of my totes up here on the shelving. So I'm just gonna do a jumper real quick. And there's my CPU spinning. I'm not getting lights on the board and I never noticed that till now. And those lights used to always come on on this one just like they do on this one. So I bet you I'm not gonna get a post on this one. I bet this board is DOA. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. Let's please take a moment of silence for this board. I've had it for over five years. It's a Gigabyte H110D3A tank of a motherboard, old school. It has served me well. Let's take a moment of silence, please. Thank you. All right. Let's go ahead and move on. So we've already figured out we did all of this troubleshooting all this time when in reality all I had to do was take the good motherboard out of another one, plop it into the rig, hook it all back up and it probably would work. But we need to clean that thing, clean all those GPUs anyway. So it's been a fun project to strip this thing down. And now we know that this board's dead and I've got two extra sticks of RAM here, the old four gigabyte DDR3. I've got an extra G3930 to set aside in case I need it. And this board will go on eBay for like 10 bucks or whatever, just to get it out of here. Cause I don't think there's any saving it, but somebody out there will think that they're getting a deal. And somebody out there will think they can save the thing, even though I sure can't save it, but dead motherboard. There you go, it's been fun. Thanks for coming along with me. I haven't done one of these troubleshooting ones in a while. and. Honestly, this is the kind of thing that really gets me back into mining. And this is the kind of thing that the miners that don't love hardware that aren't in it for, for the hardware and the fun of, of tearing things down and troubleshooting, this is the kind that would make them lose their hair. But I love it. All right, so here we are. We've got the rig all cleaned up and we've got the board back in it and we've got it running all like it should. And it posted right up, went straight into Windows. Easy peasy, it recognized the different CPU with no issues. And yeah, so it's up and running. And now all we have left is the tedious part of cleaning the GPUs and then we'll slot them into the test bench one at a time, make sure they're running properly. And then we'll slot them all back in this rig. We'll put the rig back in its home. And actually we might just go ahead and throw the uh, RTX 3080 founders in here so that at least it'll be being used. It's just sitting around right now waiting for its forever home. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Now let's actually go ahead and cut to that outro. Well, there you have it. All troubleshooted UNSC is back to life. The PSA here is don't grow your garden. Don't grow your mining farm with actual water. If you're new to mining and you need some help, make sure to join the Misfit Mining Discord. There's always plenty of seasoned vets in there willing to help you out. If you like the video, you know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe for future content. Thanks for coming along and enjoy the ride.